Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT version 12, and we're looking at a add-on module in this one. Um, first of all, what's really important, as of recording this video, there has been a, another update to the version 12. We're now on build uh, version 12 build 327. Um, so just a little stable release. release. It's uh, stable patch 4, I think it was. Um, just clearing up a few bugs and things. So just so you're aware the where I am when I'm doing these testings, we are going to encounter some little glitches and things like that. Remember, I am going first so that you guys can make a decision on whether you, you should or should not, uh, and you can see it go hideously wrong for me. Um, right, that out the way. We're going to be looking at an add-on today, as I mentioned. Now, in the previous video, we looked at hover distance, um, which basically with drag ruler kind of disappearing, Get, coming up with a different solution for that and hover distance is really good it's one of the ripper modules and we know those are good uh, you might have already seen i've got an error at the top of the screen i'll come back to that in a moment um yeah and that, that's really really good but somebody mentioned that there is an alternative to that which is called tactical grid so we're going to look at tactical grid in this one which does the same as hover distance but some other stuff as well so let me show you uh we are in a gridless map here uh, i've got sorryman thrown up and a goblin no grid visible at all now if i select this goblin in fact if i hover over this goblin you can see a grid pops up so only when I'm hovering over, we've got a red grid and that actually is showing where that grid is and we can make some decisions about where we want to move and things like that. If I hover over Sorryman, I've made this black. Sorry, it's, a, it's not easy to see. Zoom in a bit. Um, I've made his one black uh, because I thought that would be easier to see. I'm not convinced actually now. <laughs> Maybe the green it originally came with, but you can customize his colors. We'll get to that in a moment. So that's the very first thing, no grid, but if you want a grid for certain conditions, you can have that on. Now, what's really important to note is this function of this hovering over to get a grid. Um, you can have that only show in combat or you can have it all the time, which, whichever you prefer, which is good. Again, we'll come back to the settings. Now, if I click and hold on to this goblin as if I'm going to move him, can you see that Sorryman now has a 40 foot on him? So it is telling this goblin how far away that particular character is. And if I start to move the goblin towards Sorryman, that number on Sorryman goes down. He's now 35 foot away. But on the goblin's original square, it says five feet. So it's telling me how far the goblin is moving away from its original place and how far away the other tokens are. So we can work out, oh, I've moved 30 feet, oh, I can't reach Sorryman. So even from here, just by by selecting it ready to move, uh, it will tell me how far that away is. Now, whether you want that or not is entirely up to you because you will get players who are doing the, oh, I can't reach that goblin, um, I, you know, or oh, it's close, but I can't quite reach it. So they will use the mechanics of that to make decisions. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is entirely the way you run your game. It's up to you. Um, but I do think it's useful. Um, so Sorryman knows he can move 30 foot, he can get to there. He's not going to be able to move into melee range. So maybe he'll fire a crossbow knowing that the goblin also can't get to him. Uh, unless he's got a reach weapon, of course. So uh, yeah, that's, the f that's, that, that's kind of mostly what we've got here. But we can uh, customise a lot of these things. So let's have a look at some of these... Uh, just remind you what we've got here. So this is my, my test world with the automations on, but this is a standalone. It doesn't need all of these extra stuff. What we're looking at is tactical grid. That's what it's called. Okay, so just tactical grid. Um, and it is updated. It is verified for this version of Foundry. Having said that, there is a little glitch with it. doesn't seem to impact its actual function, um, <laughs> but there is a glitch. So uh, let's go to our configure settings. And scroll down to my tactical grid and see what we've got here. So first of all, you can disable the grid if you want to. Um, so again, I don't know, but I suspect this is um, a player option so that they can, if they want to, turn that off and not use it. Um, do we want to display distances on the ruler drag? So not only have we got this on our dragging our tokens, but we can also have it for the ruler. And I'll show you that in a moment. 
Uh, do we want to play dis display the distances on token drag? Obviously, I've got that on. You can see that. It's showing me the distance to the target as well as the distance I've moved. Do we want to do that? Uh, so the ruler grid spaces, calculate the ruler grid on the, based on the measurement, the, the, uh, the square increments. Um, and enable the range highlighter. Turn on, turn on off token item range highlighter on hover. Okay, so uh, yeah, you play with these and decide what's going to work for you. Now inside the settings, there's a fair few bits. So on enable grid, we can have this on. I could put it on on control. So that means as soon as I select this token, that grid is on. As soon as I select Thoriman, it's on. Okay, so it's going to come on straight away. Um, you can do that if that's how you want it. Uh, you can have it when you hover over that token. You can have it combat only. So you might say when I'm con when it's controlled, but only in combat. So let's just see what that looks like. Oddly enough, no grid. Okay, I've still got my measures distances on, but I haven't got the grid showing up because I'm not in combat. So that's really nice. The fact that you can customize it uh, into quite some detail. I'm going to take that off. In fact, I'm going to just leave hover on, leave them both on, that's fine. Uh, and you can make decisions about what layers you want that to show on if you want to. Under grid here is where we can define the size of that grid that shows around creatures. So default grid distance, um, if we set that to two, make it really small. Uh, look how small that is around Soriman now and around the Goblin. It's literally two squares and it forms a full square around them. As we move the token, those two squares go with us. So you might say actually two, that's a bit ridiculous. That's not actually very helpful. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> that, that's just to illustrate. But what you can do is use the token property based distance. So this will look at the token itself and now if I do, sorry, man, look how much further that is. Hang on, I need to deselect you. Thank you very much. It, it makes the grid bigger based on the movement speed of that token. So sorry, man, can move a bit further than the goblin can. So straight away, visually, just by hovering over, I can see how far that goblin can move. It can move, uh, it can move to his 25. Is it 25? 30? I think goblins are 25, aren't they? No, it is 30, yeah. So he can move to that 30 foot and the grid moves with him as he does that. So um, I don't know why I forgot how far goblins can move, but there we go. Uh, so yeah, you can turn that on and off if you want. Um, it seems to work absolutely fine, but you might find occasions when that doesn't work and you might want to just go, actually, I'm always just going to default it to... to Hello. Don't move him. Oh, hang on. Is it because I've got you selected? Is that why you're not liking me changing the setting because I've got a token selected? Is it because... Oh, it's good. <laughs> oh, there's a tip for you. Okay, you can't change the default grid view distance if you've got the token property based distance ticked. <laughs> Yeah, we learned something new. It locks it for us. Um, but you might just go, uh, I've got five foot squares. I'm going to default to that grid of six, that which gives you your 30 foot base. So you might choose to do that. It's up to you, obviously. Uh, and of course, this is where it's looking to find out and it's using the attributes movement walk speed here. So, of course, because it's using walk speed, if you've got something that flies, it might have a, you know, a 10 foot walk, but a, a 30 foot fly. Um, this is going to use walk for it. So that's an instance where you might go, yeah, that's good. the grid's never going to be quite that useful. Um, do you care? You might not care. You might have so few flying creatures that when it happens, it doesn't, it's only showing you the grid. It might not be a problem. If you've got player characters who are flying, you might find that that is, yeah, you, know, you might want to change that. Uh, we can also change the default grid shape here. So mine happens to be on soft square at the moment, but I can change that to, let's change it to circle, for example. Let's see what that looks like. Hover around Soriman. And you can see, just if you're looking up here where my mouse pointer is, as I hover over there, it's not full squares. It's cutting those corners off for us. And in fact, actually, if I made that a bit smaller, that would be a bit easier to see. So you can change the shape of it, whatever works for you. Um, soft edges, hard edges, whichever. And here is where you can change those colors if you want to. Let's uh, let's put Soriman back, friendly tokens back as green. And now when I hover over him, 
you've got that green that's why i changed it to black because i've got a lot of green on here it's probably not easy to see on the grass but uh yeah you can change those colors uh, enemies by default are red um, friendlies are green and neutrals are blue by default but you change them however you like uh, yeah all cool uh, so we've also got some options for the ruler so enable the tactical grid for the ruler as well if we want to and again we've got a view distance and we've got some shapes that we can use and we've got color so what are we talking about that so I've got Soriman selected of course I've got a ruler option here so I can measure my distances okay so let me uh let me unselect sorry man just go to the ruler uh can you see the the grid comes up when i'm using the ruler now you might find that your player characters are not using the ruler very much this might be somewhat of a redundant i, I don't think any of my players have ever actually got the ruler out <laughs> i don't think they have um yeah if you're using grids you probably don't need it but it's useful to know it's there if you do use the ruler a lot you can now for me i would say i'm probably not going to worry about that because if i click on sorry man um you know i can see what my distance is to my various tokens whether i can reach them or not anyway so i don't really need to use the ruler but it's there if you use it fantastic it's lovely to have that as another option um, there's some stuff about measurement here so it includes measuring when you're elevated so hover distance that was one of the things that we liked about that module is we had that manticore up in the air um, and it calculated how far away it was including its height which is what you want for ranged weapons if you care to that level of detail some people just don't they go oh it's close enough just hit it um, just keep combat nice and, and nice and speedy um yeah all sorts of things you can change here you can ignore tokens with um, certain effects so uh you might say well actually ignore ones that are unconscious incapacitated dead etc you can up the precision if you need to i don't know why you would but it's there and of course this i'm talking about dnd because that's most well that's actually the only game i play in foundry um but there's other systems where that more precision might be more useful for you uh, got some other options about the diagonal multiplier, the way that you want that work, what that to work, etc. You can change the fonts of those um, letters and stuff and markers and all of those things. Now, I haven't played with this bit yet, but uh, it's got cover calculator. No, sorry, it hasn't got cover calculator built in, but it has got a cover option. So if you've got any of these um, modules in that you're using for cover, then it will take that into account as well and it should give you a label to show whether that uh, target is half cover three quarters cover or total cover which is really nice now i've not got any of these in i haven't looked properly yet at uh, any of these cover ones but i will be looking at levels auto cover um, because that's the uh, that's the uh, the rippers one that ties in with his levels etc so that makes sense we know that they will work beautifully together because they're written by the same person and we know ripper stuff is on point so um, that's likely to be the one we'll cover and then we can come back and check that that works with this as well uh, and there's also a massive menu mostly to do with colors uh, about range okay so item range highlighter uh, you can enable this token range highlighter etc um, lots of options for colors and things like that that you can use as well so does it do everything that a hover distance does yes does it do an awful lot more yes the only question is is how many of these extra features would you actually use um, i really like the fact that um, the grid not so much but what I really like is the fact it tells me the distance I've moved and the distance to my targets. I do like that. I think that's really nice. Um, I don't have a problem with the grid pop-up. I think I would probably use tactical grid over hover distance because of that extra utility. Uh, it's just a little bit more detail. And if I'm using gridless maps, which I'm rapidly moving towards gridless i know most of you use gridless anyway and i totally get it in a lot of the stuff we've done before we've been using maps directly from the module and they already come with grids because they're not designed for vtt's they're designed for you know for tabletop play etc um so a lot of the maps we have used have got grids but i prefer them without grids myself uh, so having this where it will put the grid over the top 
probably for me only in combat would make sense so what settings would i probably actually use um i think i would probably be going with um control and hover combat only i'd probably be going with using the uh the the, the view distance uh, i'd probably go with the square because again it's only in combat um ruler i'd leave that on but i doubt it will ever get used um and i would include elevation uh and things like that um and i would be using the cover factor when i got that sort of installed and up and running so this is how i think i would have mine um now i've turned the grid off now one thing i did want to show you if i pop over to uh, my other scene here um it might not do it now Okay, so I've got several characters here. Um, now just bear in mind that this creature is 50 foot in the air. If I stand next to it, it's not 5 foot away, it's 55 foot away. So that uh, angle calculator including height does actually work. Um, and you can see that Sorryman can see his distance to all of those other ones. Now for some reason, on this map in this scene it's not giving me the grid it's not showing that grid why i do not know but you did see right at the beginning that there was an error if i just open the, the console here um the error that is talking about the fact that there is a um it's trying to access a particular thing in foundry and it's looking in the wrong place so there is an error that comes up um that will get fixed i'm sure it will get fixed it's to do with the foundry version changes that it's just looking for a thing in a different place and it's not finding it so i I'm, i can only assume that that's related to why my grid doesn't show up here um shows up here <laughs> it was showing up here it stopped showing up here as well now why is that <laughs> did i do something silly i don't think i turned it off did i so just be aware, at the moment, it's not quite working. You've just seen how it does actually does work when it works. Um, but uh, it's a little bit twitchy at the moment. Um, yeah, my grids have disappeared completely. Now, one last thing I do want to say about when you're configuring these grids, if you uh, right click and go to your configure scenes under grid, you do have this tactical grid where it says about choosing the grid line width. I've whacked mine right the way up. It says it requires a canvas reload. Let's give it a canvas reload. So I'm just going to control F5 to reload. I've got that error message again. Error detected. Okay. Uh, and again, if I open the console, I know you can't read it very well. And it says you're accessing a global audio, help, uh, audio helper, which is now found somewhere else. Uh, it wasn't saying audio helper. It was previously it was saying you're accessing global this get property which must now be accessed via foundry utils get property um, and that's literally to do with the change from 11 to 12 so that will get fixed at some point um, just be aware of it um, but it's obviously connected with the grid because now the grid's not working but even when the grid was working I'm rambling a bit all over the place. Even when the grid was working, I've got this setting here for the tactical grid. Those lines should be really thick and they're not. Okay, they are still the like the default of one pixel wide, even though I've put it right up. So that will be the little glitch that is happening at the moment. It's not 100% there, but I think it's a really nice module when it works. It's just a bit twitchy right now. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Um, you know that obviously will get fixed at some point but uh right now not so much but anyway uh, let me know what you think i think it's i think it's a lovely little module um for actual gameplay i'll probably stick with hover distance for the moment until this gets fixed because there's nothing worse than your players going oh i know how this works it's really good and then it doesn't work and then you spend half the session trying to explain why something's broken or fixing on the fly and nobody's got time for that <laughs> that's not what we're here for is it 
So let me let me know what you think. Do you use this? Uh, have I missed any important functions in here? Because uh, there's, <laughs> there's often when I do these, somebody goes, "Ah, oh, you didn't cover this." <laughs> it's like, nope, I didn't. I didn't realise it could do that. Uh, so again, you know, leave stuff in the comments. It's really really helpful for others to read your comments and go, "Ah, oh, right, okay, I can also do that." Because um, yeah, I'm not an expert on any of these. Um, but some of you have been using some of these mods for quite a long time. You know it far better than I do. Right, that's it. Enough rambling. Thank you very much. Please leave a like. Yeah, leave a comment uh, if it's appropriate. And of course, if you're not subscribed, please do so. And I will see you in the next one. Take care now.